Hi everyone, Annie from Hoop Sisters. It's good that you're watching this video. That means you're making our beautiful fleur de lis quilt. Five inch sample, and this is what you're gonna see in the video. And then in the quilt itself, B1 is located up there. Also over here, over on that side, and down at the bottom, which you probably can't see in the video. But basically, these are the corners of the main quilt. So your main quilt stops there. This is the border corner up here, and also in the other four corners. So this is our block that we're making, and that's what I'm going to show you in this video. This I am ready to stitch out my block one. I have all my fabrics, I have my instructions, and I have my fabric and thread key. And I have my background fabric, which is going to be the same as my fabric six in this case. I also have my fabric five, and another little piece, little triangles of fabric six. Hopefully you can notice that there's this is a little bit darker, this is a little bit lighter. I also have my fabric one for the main applique. In the lower right hand corner I have my fabric two, two some little pieces here. And these are piles enough for four blocks. I also have my water soluble thread. I have my thread A, my thread B in a matching bobbin, my thread D and my thread E which is go going to be my quilting thread for this project and also matching bobbin. So there you have it. Let's get started on block one. All right, I have my water soluble thread in the needle and embroidery bobbin thread in the bobbin, and it's going to stitch a placement stitch for step one. Now for step two, this is an optional step, you don't have to do this, but we like to add just a layer of wool batting and you can see it's been pressed on the edges about a quarter of an inch and that's so that your presser foot does not get caught in that. Um, at this point you want to um, probably go to your screen on your machine and be able to um, raise your presser foot to a higher height so that it does not get caught in the wool batting. But now that I have my placement stitch that we just did, step two, we're going to lay this wool batting that we prepared, and we're going to lay it in the placement stitch, and it's going to sew a zigzag stitch to hold it to the battleizer. And I'm just going to keep my hand nearby just to make sure nothing shifts. So now we're ready for step three. We're still going to leave our water soluble thread in the needle and we're going to take our fabric five which for me is the lighter cream color. We're going to center it right over that wool. So I like to peek underneath, make sure it's even on both sides and also top and bottom. Let's do a little peek and with water soluble thread it's going to sew and a tack down stitch to attach this to the entire piece. everything smoothed out so we don't end up with a, a tuck or a pucker at the end. Okay, so now I'm 
going to just slide my hoop over. This section right here, what we're going to do is we're going to, I can't find my hoop scissors, I didn't have it ready for the video, but there's a bigger hoop scissors you can use, but I'll just use my mini. And you're going to trim this to about a quarter of an inch seam. And then I'm going to change my thread and then we're going to piece this other little corner section. Alright, step four, we're going to take this little piece of fabric six, so it's a little darker than my fabric five. I'm going to lay it right side down, raw edges even, and I have changed a neutral thread in the needle, and I'm going to sew a seam. Okay, and now I'll switch to water-soluble thread. So the water-soluble thread is in. I'm going to tack down this little corner, and then we're going to sew a placement stitch so we know where our applique goes. For fabric six, I'm going to bring it a little closer so you can see it. We're going to take our applique fabric and we're just going to place it right over the top of the block. It's a big piece of applique, so we're going to cover a lot of it. And we still have water soluble thread, and we're going to do the tack down for the applique. time to trim and we are going to trim we're going to start right here and we're going to trim all around inside the block when we get over to this section right here you're gonna stop you're gonna want all this and all this down here to be right to be included inside the seam allowance because there will be no satin cover stitch to cover that up and then you will also trim here so again we start trimming here and we go all the way around and stop there leaving this in the seam allowance. We'll trim here and we'll leave this in the seam allowance as well. If you have a, a fabric that's darker than your fabric one that you're going to put in this corner you could probably just cover it up and not have to take that out. Um, but if you have if the fabric in the corner is going to be a little bit lighter than this main applique fabric, you might want to definitely trim that out. So let me do that and then you'll be able to see what, what I mean when you see the finished picture. Alright, for step 7 we're going to take our fabric 2 and we're going to place it in this lower right hand corner. We're going to make sure that it extends into the seam allowance by 3 8 to a half an inch and also make sure that you're covering that up sufficiently. Um, we're still sewing with water soluble and we're going to sew the tack down stitch. It's just a little teeny tiny piece, especially on this little five inch block. Now what we're going to do is we're going to trim this just inside the block. All the fabric on the outside of the block we're going to leave in place.
For step eight, I have thread D in the needle, and I still have embroidery bobbin thread in the bobbin, and I'm going to sew some of the leaf detail. Step nine, where I have my thread B as in boy in the needle, and we're going to sew the satin stitch. Step ten, we have thread A in the needle, and we're going to sew satin stitch around the pink applique. Stop to trim whatever thread tails you may have. It's still doing the underlay, but I did notice that um, sometimes if your fabric is on this whatever angle it might be cut on, you might see a little extra pokies, that little threads that come out. This might be a good time to trim those away before it does the final satin stitch. Sometimes they may show, sometimes they might not, but just in case, I want it to look nice and clean. All right, step 11, you can see how my block is shaping up nicely. Step 11, we're going to add our backing fabric. And this is my backing fabric. So you can, you can attach it to this. If you have the rough side of the battleizer that's in the hoop, it'll pretty much cling to it pretty good. But if not, or if you just want a little extra security on the wrong side of the block, you can take a little KK2000 spray and spray over your trash can on the wrong side of your fabric and then center it and again you're going to need to pull it back to make sure you're centered left to right and top to bottom and then you can take it to the machine and we will put water soluble thread in the needle and we're also going to turn our thread cutter off and then we're going to sew a basting stitch around it. So at the machine for step 11, I have water soluble thread in the needle. I have put my back on the back of the hoop, so I'm just going to peek underneath. We like to peek underneath just to make sure that that fabric is still laying flat. Um, we jokingly have a terminology called Dunlop, and that's when that backing fabric isn't laying flat and it flips over and gets stitched down like that. That's just kind of like our little hoop sisters terminology. But again, I've turned off my thread cutter and it's going to sew a basting stitch to hold the backing fabric on. And the reason we turn our thread cutter off is so that you don't have a mess on the back of your hoop. It just makes it a lot neater. So here it comes around with that basting stitch. And after this, we're going to start quilting. Everything will be a quilting step, so we're going to match our needle and bobbin thread going forward. Step 12 is some quilting. Before I just hit the start button to let it quilt, I'm going to do needle down, 
needle up and I'm going to bring my bobbin thread to the top and my bobbin thread is matching my needle thread at this point. And now I can go ahead and sew the quilting. And I do that so it doesn't make a bird's nest on the back of the quilt. Step 13, you're going to put some additional quilting up in this corner. It's going to be a different thread, so you have a different color going there. It's thread B, and again to begin I'm going to do a needle down and a needle up, and bring the bobbin thread to the top of the hoop, and then take a few stitches and trim that thread tail. So we finished our block one and on the last page of the instructions it talks about the trimming and basically if you're going to make just the main quilt and not put the border corners on it then this will be the corners of your quilt and where there are corners they're going to be marked in red or in edge it will be marked in red and you need to trim this a quarter of an inch through all the layers for a quarter of an inch from the basting stitch. So that's why that's marked that way. These other two sides we're going to trim using the trimmer by George. However, I am going to add the border corners to this and if you're going to do that, then you will trim all four sides using the trimmer by George um, because I'm going to be sewing another block to each side of this. So if you're not familiar with our trimmer by George 2.0, it's an acrylic ruler it has a metal edge right here and basically that thin metal edge enables you to be able to put the metal edge between the battleizer and the fabric on the front of the block and lay it down and then you might want to just peek under here just to make sure no fabric is sticking out and if no fabric is sticking out then you can use you have to use a 60 millimeter rotary cutter then you can use the edge of that um, metal etched in order to cut the block away and what happens is all the fabric is cut right up to the basting stitch and the battleizer too. That way all you have is your seam allowance left which we're going to trim that as well. So for me since I'm adding the border corners I will be trimming this using the trimmer by George on all four sides. side and every block that's different every one that you do will have this information on the last page of the instructions so there it is with the battleizer and the, the fabric on the back all trimmed up to the basting stitch now I have flipped my ruler over so that we have just the ruler side showing I'm going to line the quarter inch mark with that basting stitch and we're going to trim all sides to a quarter of an inch. Okay, there it is, my completed block one. You're going to make four of these. You can see how the only thing on the outside is just the fabric from the front, and that is what will be your seam allowance, and we'll talk about that later. So there it is, block one.